Well guys, welcome into today's video. I have an exciting one planned for you guys here today, okay? We are gonna talk about 10 stocks that are down around 50% or more in the past year. I know a lot of you guys love a video like this where we talk about some beaten down stocks that everybody's just kicked down and completely forgotten about. That's what we're talking about here today, okay? This does not mean I'm endorsing these stocks or saying these stocks are buy. All I'm trying to point out is these 10 stocks, maybe there's one or two or maybe three on here that you can look more into and kind of see if it's worth investing in or not. And I'll just kind of tell you a little bit about each one of these companies. We're not going to go super deep into these companies. I'm just going to kind of give you guys a brief overview and then you can kind of take it from there and you know, see if you want to research any of these 10 stocks more. Okay. And, and this is, I had to break this one out. Okay. Stocks at a 52 week high, you know, a lot of us value investors and, and you know, folks that are longer term investors like, no, no, we don't want those stocks at 52 week high, but yeah, stock down 62%. Let me let me see that one, okay? Something I just want to say before we get into this, okay, is just because a stock is low doesn't mean it's easy money, okay? It's not the way this works. Sometimes there are stocks that are low that are great buys and you can get for a great deal and make a ton of money on over the next three, five, seven years. And sometimes there are stocks that they just keep going down, okay? Or they never recover or you get in a stock that just stagnates and it never really goes anywhere and that's not a situation you want to be in, especially if you got your money in a stock for three, five, seven years. Last thing you want to be is in a stock that it does nothing because I mean, imagine how many stocks will do a lot over the course of that time. Okay. So sometimes you're going to find some great deals down here. Sometimes you're not. Okay. I just want to point out something funny before we get into this video. I think you guys will enjoy this. Okay. Uh, I posted this in the discord chat right now. Basically, I ordered $18,000 worth of six and seven figure awards. This was a few weeks ago, right? Pretty much right when the market was at an all time high and now the market, ever since I ordered those awards, it's just been going down and down and down and down. And so, oh my gosh, now I got a pallet, literally a pallet of seven figure awards in my garage and all the market does is keep going down now. It's in my way every time I box, it's like I gotta watch out for tripping on it. A six figure awards, I got all over the place. I mean, literally all over the place, the garage, I just got stacks and stacks of them in closets, in the office, all over the place. Oh man, well someday I'll hopefully be able to give those awards out. Uh, but right now, man, we're just in a, a downtrending market. But it does mean for better deals out there and that is something every long-term investor should absolutely love, okay? Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, if you don't mind, smash a thumbs up. Let's me know you enjoyed a video like this. Also helps out the YouTube channel in a massive, massive way and I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you didn't already know, we have a ton of free resources linked in the description down there. So if you want to check out any of those resources, go ahead down in the description and those are absolutely free to check out down there, okay? Alrighty guys, let's get into these 10 stocks. First one of the 10 stocks up here that is down around 50% or more is Boeing Corporation, ticker symbol BA on this one. 52 week high on this one of $386. It's $151. So needless to say, it is down way more than 50% from its 52 week high, right? I mean, 50% would be basically if it was at 300, right? At a 52 week high. And uh, yeah, it, it topped out at 386. When it comes to Boeing, it's a stock that's in a horrible space to be right now, right? I mean, you think about this. One of the sides of their business is being a defense contractor, right? They make a ton of the, the fighter jets, right? And right now, we're not in any wars. The government's kind of in a situation where, you know, they're already having a lot of deficits in a major way. Do they want to go order a bunch of very expensive planes right now? I'm not so sure about that, okay? So th that's kind of a negative business for them in the short term, right? And in the short term, I'm talking about the next couple of years, right? Then you think about their core business, which is obviously airplanes, like commercial aircrafts, right? And this is a business that's devastated right now. Let's be quite frank, okay? It, almost every single airliner company out there is in a situation where they're worried about just how they make it through this rony run a mess. Most of these companies are either going out of business or they're gonna have to go through bankruptcy or they're gonna cut it really close. And maybe they don't have to quite go bankrupt, but it's gonna be dang close. The last thing any of those airliner companies right now, I don't care if you're talking about Delta, Southwest Airlines, American Airlines, Spirit Airlines, any of them, okay? And then we can talk about the international ones as well. I, it doesn't matter what airline it is, they're not out there being like, oh yeah, let's go order another five, ten billion dollars worth of you know, new airplanes tomorrow. Let's go order another 20 billion. Of course not. They're just worried about how the heck do they not go bankrupt right now? That's what the worry is. So which means essentially, 
Airline orders are gonna be very weak for at least the next couple years, if not the next three or four years, okay? It's not like all of a sudden tomorrow there's a you know switch that's flipped and all of a sudden you know everybody's ordering a ton of airplanes. It's just not the way it works. And remember, going into this Rony Rona mess, Boeing had issues. The 737 Max situation was a huge, horrible thing for the company, and it was just you know a negative overall, a distraction for the management team, something for their customers to worry about more and more, fines they had to pay to the government, fines they had to pay to families and, and you know different lawsuits, things like that. It was a bad situation, okay? And so that's you know starting to be cleaned up. At least that's good news that they're making progress there. There's a company right now that's got under $100 billion mark cap. I mean, a couple years ago to think this company would have under $100 billion mark cap is, it was hard to fathom, right? But it does right now. A 4P on this of in the 30s, let's put it that way. But who knows, you know, I, We'll see, we'll see what type of profitability this company has next year. Remember, most of their businesses are devastated right now. That's just the way it is, okay? Market cap actually right now, that one was incorrect. This is a real market cap because it updates over the last couple days, okay? Market cap for Boeing right now, $85 billion. So, I mean, if you think about Boeing, that's a cheap, that's a cheap valuation. No other way to slice it. 85 billion for the entire Boeing company? I mean, usually one of the, the best companies in the world, one of the most profitable companies in the world, right? And uh, 85 billion, it looks like a deal, but you gotta just understand, man, this one is gonna go through a tough period for the next several years. It's not like it's ending tomorrow and all of a sudden their business is right back. It's not happening with this one. However, on the flip side, this company basically has bankruptcy protection from the US government, right? I mean, think about it, they're a defense contractor, they're super important for the defense of the United States and just overall for the United States. And so the government, I don't think they would ever let Boeing go under, don't matter what. So that's just quite interesting when you kind of think about it for from, from that perspective and that kind of, you know, I guess gives you a little validation if you're gonna buy the stock, okay? Now, keep in mind, remember I said it's gonna take a while for Boeing to bounce back, right? In 2007, Boeing was a stock that was over $100 a share. By 2009, the stock had fallen to $35. Why am I showing you this? Because I'm trying to show you what basically happened in the last recession, okay? And you can make an argument that the last recession was nothing for the airline companies compared to this recession we're going through, right? Because this is one where travel's been shut down basically around the world, okay? At least the other one, it was just like business was slowing and the whole economy was slowing and things like that. And this stock didn't recover in a big, big way until basically 2013 and past. That's when things really got going in a big way. So this is, I'm just kind of pointing this out because because if you think Boeing's magically going to three or 400 next year, uh, slow your roll maybe a little bit. It might take quite a bit longer than that. We could be looking at a three, four, maybe even five year span where Boeing stock is is you know under $200. We'll see what happens. Obviously, valuations can move around. Sometimes people get way too excited about a stock way too early. But if you think about Boeing's business and their business model, expect there not to be a huge bounce back in their business for at least probably two to three years. And then things can just kind of start getting back on the right track. So this is one of those. If you want to buy it, just understand that this is this is you know an ultimate long-term play at the end of the day when it comes to Boeing stock. Okay. Stock number two of 10 up here is winning resorts. Winning resorts is losing resorts right now. Obviously, global travel, you know, is shut down around the world pretty much for the most part, right? Vegas has reopened over the past few months. Macau has been reopening. And so travel is slowly starting to pick up, but travel is still at a snail's pace, let's be completely honest. But when it comes to win resorts, a stock that was 150 something dollars, that's 52 week high, it's $70, it's fallen well over 50% from its 52 week high. If you don't know win resorts, they operate two unbelievably huge, beautiful properties here in Vegas. These properties offer gaming. That's where they make the most of their money, okay? They offer restaurants, nightclubs, lounges, bars, spas, pools, all those different things, okay? Shopping, everything you could possibly imagine when resorts has it in a very high-end experience. So two properties here in Las Vegas. Las Vegas is slowly starting to bounce back. The weekday business is still extremely weak because there's no conventions, meetings, anything like that, which you know is what Las Vegas thrives on for that during the week business. Basically, it's a, it's a Friday, Saturday business on, in Las Vegas right now. If you come out on a Friday, Saturday, it's actually pretty busy out here. Like not busy like it usually would be, but it's actually, it's not like, oh my, on the strips of ghost town. No, it's actually a lot of people walking around, a lot of people 
going shopping to restaurants, things like that. So, you know, it's gonna be a slow recovery, but you know, Vegas will recover. Macau, so they have two properties in the old part of Macau, kind of like more downtown Macau. Those properties are usually very profitable properties, beautiful properties in Macau. Macau's, you know, slowly starting to bounce back. It's actually even a slower bounce back than Vegas had because of a lot of restrictions China had for people coming into Macau, leaving out of Macau, things like that, okay? Wind Palace, that's their premier property that's on the Koh Tai Strip, and that's just kind of like prime real estate, their prime property. Their property, if you think about what's gonna be the biggest cash cow for this business for the next 10 years, it's gonna be the Wind Palace property over everything. Just an amazing, amazing property. I think they spent like $4.2 billion on that property, something like that. Like one of the most expensive buildings you'll ever find in the world, incredible, okay? And then they have a property called Encore Boston Harbor. It's just outside Boston in Everett, Massachusetts. Uh, you know, great experience. Obviously, it's a, a property that offers things that you can't get anywhere else in Boston in, in terms of the experience. There's just nothing that even touches it anywhere remotely close to Boston or the, the area surrounding in terms of the room size you get on average, the, the quality of service, everything just across the board. And so that's a property that has a lot of just local business at the end of the day, but also a property where when people are traveling a lot, to Boston to do work and things like that. People that maybe want to kind of, you know, have a little bit of vacation fun and travel for business at the same time, they book it somewhere like an Encore or they have a lot of money in general. Where do you want to book? You'd much rather book a suite at the Encore and some, you know, you know, I don't know, a little place in, in downtown Boston or something like that. So amazing property that will slowly start to bounce back as well, okay? Wind Resort's entire company, entire company is valued less than $8 billion right now. Less than $8 billion for the entire company. Company. All of those unbelievable properties, that unbelievable employee force over there at Wind Resorts. I mean, you know, how profitable those properties are in any usual times. You're getting this entire company for less than $8 billion right now. 4P of around 11 on that. We'll see what happens with Wind. As far as Wind goes, this is a stock that I've, you know, been in and out of for years and years and years now, okay? And what I can tell you, I understand this company on a very high level. Price points when it comes to Wind Resorts, okay? Under $120 is a good price for wind. If you you know ever thinking about uh, think about buying wind stock, under 120 is a good price. Okay, usually over 120, I don't buy the stock. If it's under 120, I'm interested and I might actually buy. Okay, under 100 is a great price for wind resorts. Under $80 is an amazing price for win, okay? If you can ever get the shares under 80, it's an amazing deal. And if it ever goes under $60, which it rarely does, only a few times in the past, you know, 10, 15 years, it has gone under $60. When you can get it under $60, it's silly pricing. It's just silly pricing. Unfortunately, when the stock fell under 60 back in March, April, I wasn't able to buy as many shares as I really wanted to because at that time, there was so much uncertainty. I didn't know, like, are the properties gonna have to be closed for a year or like two years? Like no one really knew that the properties were only gonna be closed for maybe like two or three months, which is essentially what ended up happening there. That was a scary time. So it was like, if wind's gotta be closed for a year or two, like this company's probably gonna go under, right? But since they only had to be closed for a couple months, it looks like, well, obviously they made it through that and they should make it through to the other side. So when it comes to pricing, just keep that in mind for wind resorts, okay? Stock number three or 10 up here is Cheesecake Factory. It's a restaurant company, 52 week highs, $44 and some change. It's a $27 dollar stock here today. You probably know Cheesecake Factory. They operate some awesome restaurants all over the United States and they actually have some, some of these Cheesecake Factory locations even around the world. Amazing brand, does super well, okay? On top of the Cheesecake Factory brand, they own what's called Fox Restaurant Concepts. And this company essentially just tries out a bunch of different new brands and they see what's gonna work in the market, what's not gonna work, what can be the next Cheesecake Factory essentially? Like what can we potentially open 50, 100, maybe hundreds of locations around the United States and maybe the world in the future? So Flower Child, The Henry, Culinary Dropout, Blanco, Doughbird, Olive and Ivy, The Greenhouse, The Arrogant Butcher, and Zinburger, all brands they own. But the main one that has come out of this recently is North Italia. And I can tell you North Italia has, in my opinion, close to what the Cheesecake Factory has in terms of being able to have mass market appeal and being able to be successful in most big cities around the United States and around the world. So I believe in that brand a lot long term, okay? That is a brand that a lot of people love, usually gets very, very good reviews. The entire Cheesecake Factory company right now is selling for $1.26 billion. $1.26 billion for the entire thing, okay? So needless to say, it's a you know intriguing valuation. Maybe it's something to look into, maybe. 
not, all right? Stock number four of 10 up here is RCL, Royal Caribbean Corporation, okay? Royal Caribbean, this is a cruise company. 52 week high of 133, $61 stock here today. It's down well over 50% from its 52 week high. The, obviously the cruise industry has been devastated. There's just no doubt about it. I mean, everything travel related is devastated right now. These stocks are trading at, you know, a lot of the lowest prices. I mean, obviously they, they hit their low lows around March, April, but even now they're still trading incredibly low compared to where these stocks usually trade at, right? Cruise company, I mean, look at their ships. I'm gonna show you guys some pictures of their ships. I mean, I don't even like to travel. And I'll be honest, every time I see Royal Caribbean's like ships, uh, from like photos, videos, like commercials, I'm like, that looks freaking awesome, man. I wanna, I wanna go on that myself. I wanna take my wife on that. I wanna take my kids on that. Like that just looks awesome. I don't even like to travel at all. But when I see these ships, it makes me literally wanna get on because it looks freaking amazing. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's just, I mean, let's play some basketball in the middle of the ocean. I mean, this is just amazing. These, these ships are epic. That's the best way I can describe it. Epic. I mean, look at these pictures, guys. Absolutely amazing. Okay. This is a business model that will bounce back. Let's be honest. It will bounce back a hundred percent. It's just going to take a while, right? I mean, a lot of people already want to go on cruise. If they were allowing cruising in the United States, I can tell you there'd be plenty of people already going cruising. How do I know this? Because I live in Las Vegas and I go down the strip on a Friday, Saturday night and I see it's actually busy down there, okay? So there's clearly a segment of the population that does not care and they're not scared at all about getting Rony Rona even though they haven't gotten a vax or anything like that. And so if we were allowed to actually do cruising in the United States, I bet you these ships would actually be decently busy. That might not be the best thing, but hey, at the end of the day, like people would be doing it. So just understand, once cruising is allowed again, are these ships gonna be 100% filled? I doubt it. But are they gonna be filled enough to make a profit? More than likely, okay? There's a lot of people that can't wait to go on cruise again. $13 billion mark cap on this company. You know, likely they're gonna make it through this mess. It depends, obviously, you know, what happens if, you know, cruising has to be shut down for all of 2021. Uh, I mean, you know, maybe that's a situation where it doesn't. So there's definitely a risk to the stock, but, as long as they make it through this whole mess and cruising starts up again in 2021 in a real way, 2022 is a build year in a massive way, get back to scale. I mean, this is gonna be a hundred dollar stock again. CCL, I had to include this one. If I'm gonna put Royal Caribbean on the list, I gotta put CCL on this list of stocks that are down 50% plus, right? In terms of Carnival Cruise Line, CCL, this is a stock that's you know valued, the entire company's valued at $12 billion here today. They've made a lot of moves as far as issuing debt out there, things like that. Things that will hurt the business model over the next several years as they do bounce back, because they're gonna have to pay down a lot of this debt that's high interest or try to restructure that debt, things like that. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a messy situation for the next few years in Royal Caribbean and CCL, I can tell you that, okay? But the whole company's valued at 12 billion here today, right? The stock has a 52 week high of over $50. So the stock's down massively. I mean, absolutely massively. It's a $14 stock here today. Um, but at the end of the day, when it comes to CCL, RCL, and even Norwegian Cruise Lines, all they have to do is make it through this mess. If they can just make it through this mess, you know, the, the world is theirs over time. They just have to make it through. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that whole situation, but uh, intriguing stocks, and I had to put those on the list because those stocks have been devastated and they're still really low. Even though they bounced back off their lows, they're still really, really low, okay? And if we're gonna stay in the shipping space and stocks that have been beaten down in the shipping space, then we gotta throw NET on this list of 10 stocks that are down 50% plus, okay? This is a stock that was priced at $8 plus just a few months ago. It's a $3 stock here today in terms of NAT, you know, this is an oil tanker company, okay? And I gotta say, I mean, the company's making money hand over fist right now. The, the net income for the last quarter was $49 million. That's ridiculous. Like this whole company is valued at like $500 million. And in a three month span, they had net income. We're not talking revenue. We're not talking top line. We're talking bottom line of, of almost 50 million. Like that's absolutely insane. The company's paying out massive dividends right now. Like when I say massive, I mean massive, massive. But we will get to some bad in just a moment when it comes to NAT, because there's always two sides of the story when it comes to a lot of these beaten down stocks. Usually they're not just beaten down for no reason. A lot of times people are looking at different things, okay? So NAT, by 
by the way, they just ordered two new Suez Maxes in South Korea. And so it's kind of like a bittersweet thing when a company like, like NAT orders some new ships essentially because it puts more supply out the market. So then you wonder, well, are they gonna be able to get as high of a rate if there's more supply of ships out there, right? So that's kind of a negative. On the positive side, it's like, hey, the, the company believes in the business model, so they're ordering two new ships. If they if they didn't believe that you know the company was gonna be in a better place a few years from now than it is today, they wouldn't be ordering new ships, right? So it's it's like a bittersweet thing. There's a, there's, there's a negative side, you can take it very negatively or you can take it very positive. Positively, it's up to you, okay? But needless to say, they got two ships that will be coming in, it uh, looks like the first half of 2022, because those ships do take a little while. Now, there's another one of those things, if we look at the positive, we look at the negative, okay? The glass is half full, the glass is half empty in this whole situation, okay? Tanker Market Index. The Tanker Market Index, as far as how the company has done this entire year, it's been amazing. This has been one of the best years for NAT in modern history, like the last like decade essentially, okay? But on the negative side, I mean, the prices have just been falling and falling and falling and falling and falling and falling for the last, you know, basically three or four months. And that's why the stock has gone from $8 to $3 in that amount of time because everybody is scared as heck that NAT is gonna go from a situation where this year in 2020, they're making money hand over fist and the profits are pouring in, the net income's pouring in, but maybe 2022 is all of a sudden a year where all of a sudden they're losing money again. If you're wondering why is this company still stock so low and they got you know more profitability than the companies maybe ever had in modern history it's because a lot of people are scared of what's going to happen next year and no one really knows like maybe next year's a, a great year for NAT maybe it's an awful year like no one really knows at this time you know last year or even at the beginning of this year a lot of people thought this was going to be an awful year for NAT and that's why the stock was trading at two three dollars if you go back you know beginning of this year but it ended up being one of the best years in modern history for NAT so we'll have to see but for NAT you know, this is a stock that in terms of how investors look at the stock, it's either the end of the world or it's a money printer, okay? That's just the bottom line with NAT. Super volatile, a commodity related business, unfortunately. And so it's one of those stocks, man, if you if you time it out right and you get in it at the right time, there's there's a lot of money to be made here. Remember, this stock went from like two bucks to eight dollars in a matter of like two or three months span, okay? And it also went from you know eight to three over the past few months as well. So it's either a money printer stock for you, it's the end of the world. Right now it's looking closer to the end of the world type of perspective, at least on the stock price, okay? Stock number six of 10 up here is Wells Fargo Corporation, ticker symbol WFC. This is a stock that's down well over 50% from its 52 week high, which was around 52, $53. Right now it is trading pretty dang close to its 52 week low. Obviously Wells Fargo is one of the biggest banks in the world. A lot of people don't want banking stocks right now because interest rates are very low, will be low for years to go in the future. In terms of Wells Fargo stock price, okay, the last time you could get the stock price lower than where it's at, you got to go back to 2008. Okay, you gotta go back to the Great Recession when everybody was scared about all the banks were gonna go out of business and those sorts of things. That's the last time that the stock price was, was lower than where it is today, okay? $22 a share of the stock has been devastated. And when it comes to Wells Fargo, there's always some drama I found, okay? Look, I mean, this is the latest thing to happen to Wells Fargo. I mean, the, in my opinion, you know, I got a picture here, a guy looking at himself in the mirror. This is Wells Fargo's biggest enemy. Wells Fargo's biggest enemy is not JP Morgan Chase or the online bank startup or Bank of America or US Bank, no, okay? Or even interest rates and Jay Powell. No, Wells Fargo's biggest enemy is itself. There's always some drama here. And therefore, investors cannot trust. They just can't trust Wells Fargo. And that's why the stock's trading at $22, in my opinion, because a lot of people and a lot of funds just look at that management team and they're like, it's always something with this company. It's always something. They were running a lot of commercials earlier this year trying to build back their brand again. Wells Fargo was doing right. And it was like, oh yeah, we're gonna build back up our brand. And now you have something like this. It's always something with this company. Always something, okay? So just understand, like this is a company, if they can just learn to get out of their own way, it's probably a $40, $50 stock again in the future. But as long as they keep getting in their own way, they're gonna be their biggest enemy, okay? So it's just, a, it's a hard management team and company to trust for that reason because it's always something with these guys, okay? Number seven out of 10 up here. This might be the scariest one on the list, okay? I was I was afraid to even include this one on the list. And you know, a lot of these stocks can be scary. Let's be honest, okay? This You don't just get your stock to go down 50% plus without being a scary stock. But this one might be the creme de la creme of a scary stock that's on this list, okay? ACB, okay? This is an MJ stock. Number seven to 10. 
This is a stock that, I mean, you go back, it used to be a hundred something dollars a share, right? It's up $5 a share here today. 52 week range of 60 all the way down to five where it is today, okay? I mean, this is a stock in a company, a market cap right now by a way of about $700 million. So stock in a company, you know, are they even around? Do they have to go bankrupt in the next few months? That's a big question, okay? Net loss from continuing operations very recently was $1.4 billion. I mean, this company has a market cap of 700 million. Like they can't be taking $1.4 billion losses, okay? Uh, if you wanna research this one, be careful, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. And if you're even thinking about investing in ACB stock, the only thing I say to you is just plan on losing the money, okay? Plan on losing the money. Maybe they make it through. Maybe this could be, you know, a, a huge winner for you and, and, you know, they don't go bankrupt or something like that. But if you're actually thinking about buying this stock, I just wanna say, be careful, okay? This is about as high of a risk stock as you can possibly find out there in the market, okay? But I had to put it on there. And if we're talking about some high risk stocks that are down massively, let's go ahead and put Nikola on this list of stocks that are down 50% plus as well, okay? Nikola, look at this corporation. I mean, it's, it had a 52 week high of almost $94 a share. It's $21 here today, and that's just in a matter of the last few months that has happened, okay? Stock number eight to 10, I mean, it's been devastated in terms of this company. And you wanna see something funny? Look at this, guys, okay? I hadn't, yeah, I was still on Wells Fargo, and, and I was gonna type in Nikola, you know, N-K-L-A, into basically the, the quote lookup, right? And uh, before I could even do it, there's an article right there for me. The Nikola scandal proves even GM will do anything to catch up to Tesla. Oh, man, that's a funny situation. Okay, but anyways, Nikola. Well, I was trying to type that in is I want to see what his market cap was after the big fall here today. And the market cap now is eight billion dollars for this company. Okay, and it continues to fall. I mean, the market cap at its peak, I think, was around 35 billion, roughly, or somewhere right around there. It's eight billion here today. I mean, at some point, if it fell enough and, and this company could prove its tech more. I might be interested in buying it. I'm still not, okay? I'm still not interested in buying this one, but I had to put on the list just in case you guys wanna look into this one. You wanna see if there's anything out there for you. I don't wanna talk much more about it. I've done two videos about Nikola recently on Financial Education 2, so if you're not gonna check out those, you know, if you're interested in Nikola at all, you can check out those videos and uh, kinda do your due diligence from there. Stock number nine of 10 up here is Capri Corporation, ticker symbol C-P-R-I, Capri Corporation. This is a stock that topped out right around $40, and here today, it is $20 a share. Capri Corporation, they own Versace, Jimmy Choo, Michael Kors. I mean, brands you probably know, even if you don't own those products, you probably have heard of those companies before, okay? Market cap right now in this company of $3 billion. Remember, you're getting Versace, Jimmy Choo, and Michael Kors for $3 billion. Hmm, you know, might be a little interesting here, but do keep in mind this company has had some struggles even before Roni Rona. Never mind when Roni Rona has obviously taken off. So this is a company that's had some struggles that in my opinion, they overpaid for Versace. I thought that was a weird acquisition. I thought they overpaid for it. So if you're thinking about that one at all, just keep in mind, you know, the, the, there have been some questionable decisions from management team over there. And the last stock up here, number 10 of 10, is Yelp Corporation. This is another stock that's down huge, okay? This was, a, you know, a stock that was $37.50, 52-week high. It's $19 here today. So down just a little less than 50%, but right around there. I mean, one more day of falling, and it will be down 50%. Okay, and when it comes to Yelp, I mean everybody probably knows Yelp, right? I mean I use it for restaurant reviews all the time Like if I'm thinking about going to a new restaurant, I always check out reviews on it Well, how many star ratings does it have? What are the newest, you know, ratings for that restaurant and things like that? I always do that. It's a company that's priced at 1.4 billion dollars And by the way, it's not like people use Yelp just for restaurant reviews you know, use it for a lot of businesses in general. I just use it personally, mostly for restaurant reviews, okay? $1.4 billion market cap for the whole company right now. They've done a great job growing over the last several years, top line and gross profit. I mean, look at gross profit, how it's increased over the last few years. Look at how revenues increased the last few years. On the negative side though, look at net income for common shareholders. I mean, it's gone down and down and down. So that's something to look into, like why is the bottom line continuing to fall year after year while revenue and gross profit continues to climb? It's definitely something to look into if you're actually thinking about buying this corporation, okay? And if you're wondering how to figure out something like that, you can read the 10Ks. Usually they have basically explanations of, oh, our net income fell this year because of blah, blah, blah. So you can check out 10Ks, uh, also 10Qs. That might help you out as well. That usually talks about quarters over quarters for year over 
per year. And also I'll listen to conference calls will help you out there, okay? Balance sheet, the company has over half a billion dollars in cash and cash equivalents and short-term investments on this balance sheet. It's a huge number for a company with a $1.43 billion market cap here today. I mean, that is a massive, massive number. So maybe there's something there with Yelp or maybe there isn't as with all these stocks on the list. I hope at least one or two of these stocks inspired you to maybe look a little more in depth on some of these companies and see if any of them are a good fit out there. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, if you don't mind, smash the thumbs up. That helps out the YouTube channel in a massive, massive way. I appreciate each and every one of you guys that do that. Also, if you'd like to fill out an application to hopefully try to get in my private stock group, go ahead and check out the first link in the description down there. That'll allow you to fill out an application to try to get in my private stock group. You'll be able to speak to somebody high up from my team and we can talk to you a little bit about the product and service we provide out there and if it is the right fit for you. First link in the description. Thank you for watching and have a great day.